Welcome back to I'm Still Here. I'm Larry. And I'm Heather. In 1998, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer at the age of 26. It changed everything, but I'm still here. And you are still here, in part, <laughs> because, because of the tests. Because of all the testing I've done. So I thought maybe today we would talk a little bit about kind of what it, some of the things that I've learned about all the different tests and even just the way that um, I've kind of described them over the years to help people kind of better understand, mm -hmm. you know, the ins and outs of them. So. Okay. So, first one. Well, let's start first by talking about, um, well, it, it's testing, but labs drawn or mm. having a port. So, if you have a port... Um, you find you you kind of at least I got mine thinking oh this is gonna be great I can use it all the time blah 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 <laughs> not always true yeah lots and of problems. lots of problems and a lot less people that could access it so it kind of felt like I, there were many times when I had my port and I had I had multiple ports throughout the years um, that I always be I would be like never mind it's not worth it so or I would get to some place to have a test done and they're like. You know, if they could use the port, they would be like, oh, no, you have to go get that accessed way over on the other side of the hospital. And, you know, and it just didn't work out. So if you want to use your port, if you have one, you have to know kind of the ins and outs of it. One, can it be used for a test? There's some tests because they push, you know, um, contrast or something through at a rate that, you know, won't allow them to use mm -hmm. a port. So there's all different things with that. But um, ports can be great. Also, port tip that I feel like nobody talks about ever anymore is get the lidocaine. They used oh, to call yeah. it Emla. Mm -hmm. And I and I just was talking to somebody about that um, this last week. They, you know, you can get a tube of lidocaine, put it over your port first, it numbs it. I don't know why people don't shout that from the rooftops, but I feel like it's like a secret that nobody wants to talk about sometimes it makes it so much better and ports um while they're good because you can get access into a vein you know so they can get what they need they still hurt they mm -hmm. hurt especially the chest ports i i had one in my arm for a long time and i love that thing it was way more comfortable well that's what i was going to ask if given the choice on location of a port yeah i choose kind of good and bad yeah well to those I, uh, I mean, I everybody prefers. I, medical profession seems to prefer the chest ports. Um, I I was able to get an arm port because when I did my reconstruction, my port that was in my chest was kind of in the way, mm -hmm. and so they moved it to my. It was wonderful there. I had it. It was under my uh, right arm, kind of the upper forearm part, and it would. There were a few things. Occasionally, you could kind of catch it on something, and mm -hmm. that would be uncomfortable. You'd really make you jump. But for the most part, I felt like it was so much easier to access. I didn't have to think about what to wear, <laughs> like right. it, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So ports can be really great and so necessary for a lot of things, but um, they are not. They don't come with the ease that I think some people expect that they will. So right. Yeah, but... Okay, now into tests. All right, let's go into tests. I thought I'd start with a mammogram, although I really have the least experience with a mammogram. I feel like, you know, this is... We talk about breast cancer here, so we should talk about mammograms. But I think I honestly... I think I only had one of them mm -hmm. that I can remember. And, all and you I, were too young to have it. And it was... <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, um, I just remember it was pretty painful... Um, I was probably, I was in a terrible state at that point too, because we were already, we knew about the cancer. I just remember that they, that it didn't feel good and I guess you just got to do it anyway. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So it's a standard of care. I hope it's worthwhile. I don't, you know, you kind of hear good and bad about it, but yeah. The, definitely in the, the people reading the mammograms, you know, our, our technology has come a little bit more with mammograms and as far as the the picture that they get mm -hmm. but you know the person reading it has to be competent yeah in breast cancer 
in order to identify a lot of that. Yeah. So hopefully that's happening where you're getting it. Yeah. So I guess I should throw it like a, I, I also kind of went from a mammogram into a biopsy. I didn't put the biopsy on my list either, but biopsies are where they literally take a core sample of, of the tissue, right? For the mm -hmm. most part, right? Yeah. They're trying to get the, the cells uh, so they can test them. So um, I've had a few biopsies over the years. I've had them, I had them in my breast uh, initially, but I've also, they've, We've biopsied kind of bone a little bit, mm -hmm. which is not as easy to do. Um, yep. But biopsies. Oh, I had a bone marrow biopsy. Oh, that was fun. That one was not fun, <laughs> but also necessary. Mm -hmm. So in the scheme of things. Yep. Anyway. Um, okay. Next one I was thinking about is just an ultrasound. Like people talk about ultrasounds. A lot of times an ultrasound, is, I think, is a follow-up to a mammogram uh, before a kind of a biopsy would ha occur. Um, ultrasounds I think of as kind of like that's like the, the gel. They put the gel on and they use a little wand of some type, you know, and rub it around and are looking for the pictures. A lot of times you hear it, you can hear a little swish, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I did it with my heart. Also, those echoes, we, they would do um, the, the ultrasound component of those. Um, again, sort of uncomfortable sometimes just for like the way you need to lay or... Or how hard they put Or to how push. hard they have yeah. to push, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty doable. Uh, no, no real prep for ultrasounds, which is nice. Um, or mammograms. You just got to show up. Mm -hmm. So... Moving on, CT scan, CAT scan. Have you ever had one? Probably. Yeah. So I always describe the, the CAT scan as the lifesaver. So that's the one where you, the table moves through the big round circle, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've had a million of these. And there is different prep with them depending on what part of your body they are um, scanning. scanning. Yep. Oftentimes you can't eat before, um, or they'll have you drink something. They'll, they'll do all different things. But in terms of actually having a CAT scan, the only thing I, I can think, there's a couple things, I guess. Um, a lot of times they'll try to kind of, they'll have you kind of lay down and they'll strap your arms in, or sometimes they'll ask you to move your arms. I have learned, um, like when people ask me to put my arms over my head, I ask them for how long because they like to just kind of get them out of the way and I don't like the feeling of them falling asleep. And so, um, so again, you can... So what you say, there, it might only be for a portion of the test. Right, so like... And if you don't ask, your arms are going to stay there. Exactly. Or the position you're in, you're going to stay there. Sometimes you can move. Yeah, just to, yeah, to put your arms on. The other thing that's really uh, with a CAT scan is sometimes they'll do contrast uh, through tubing that they hook you up to while you're on the table. Mm -hmm. Side note, it will make you feel like you're peeing your pants. It, it, there's a warm feeling that happens. You're not. You're not peeing your pants. And again, okay. those are um, <laughs> key things to know. And they do warn you about that. I mean, they, they tell you, yeah, they tell you, I mean, oh, that, the, that yeah, they're yeah. going to do the contrast. Yeah. That they're going to do the contrast. And I think any competent tech for this would tell you, hey, you might have a, a warm feeling going through your body. It could yeah. feel like being your pants. And, yeah. 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 Because so. you can't see. I mean, you're laying down in most cases. And yeah. Can't look. Yeah. Um. The next test I did, I've done a ton of these. I don't do them as often anymore, but is a bone scan. Um, bone scans are, you're kind of, it's kind of like being a sandwich. Like you're the meat of the sandwich. When you think about it, you're laying on a, you're laying on a table, but there's a kind of something that comes down on top. Also really close. Uh, you can see out the sides, which is good. Um, and really, when I do a bone scan, they do the whole, my whole body. So I initially have to kind of turn my head to the side. They do part of it, and then, then you can lift your head back up or whatever, and they do the whole thing. So bone scans are painless. They're, um, the thing with them is that there is an injection that you do early in the day. 
or, or, you know, before the test, you have to wait a couple of hours and you're supposed to drink fluid to, um, you know, get that circulating or whatever. You're so that they it'll pick up. A lot of times with a bone scan you do, you can see a screen, which it's a it's like that fuzzy uh, skeleton type of thing that's, yeah, I don't know how closely I'd look at it. I looked at it pretty closely the first time and it didn't bode well for me. No. Um, I, yeah, bone scans, have, I've had a tough time with them over the years, just in terms of knowing that they really were the one, the things that was going to probably change my life, I think, in term, you know, and, and tell me, like. And that's obviously because the cancer had metastasized to her bones. Right. So that's why that's right. a scan she has to do. Yeah. And yeah, that should be noted, I noted too, right? The, your testing regimen is going to be based on where, um, where METs are or mm -hmm. what they're really looking for. So. so how long does a total body bone scan last? Well, the scan itself only takes about 20, 25 minutes, I think. It's not that long. Um, it's a little nerve-wracking because generally with a bone scan, they'll do the scan and then they'll say, I need to go get this checked yep. and see if you can leave. And, Similar to an x-ray. Yeah, and sometimes, yep. especially early on, they would say, oh, we need to do one more thing again. Which, of course, then sends you into, oh, my God, what's happening mode, yeah. right? Because right. you just, you know, another picture, at least in my circumstance, never They, <laughs> never weren't, they weren't making sure it wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. No. They were making sure it was. Yes. All right. So. Uh, so, just in general, why don't you talk, whether it be a bone scan or an x-ray or mm -hmm. anything like that. Uh, you know, I, I think people that, that have already had METs to their bones already know this, but maybe somebody new uh, talk about how you can't really say it's gone type of thing. Right. So, so with, yeah, bone METs, there's, you know, there's kind of these terms in cancer, you know, um, no evidence of disease, NED, no evidence of active disease, so NEAD. Or even just stable. So with bone, when cancer attacks a bone, it changes the way the bone looks in the places, right? On a that scan. it's yep. on a scan. So that's gonna appear different for a long time. Like it's not gonna, you know, just it doesn't heal the same way. So yeah, you're well. Unfortunately, with an X-ray or a bone, bone scan's a little better. But mm -hmm. with an X-ray, whether it be um, current disease mm -hmm. in that bone that's going to show up the same bright white as uh osteoblast building bone yeah. so the cells that yeah. build bone those yeah. actually building bone they show up exactly the same because it is pretty archaic i mean they've yeah. been around for a long yeah. time these it's a way that they can be non-invasive which is always good and in, in looking mm -hmm. inside of somebody but we have we have a lot more detailed uh ways to look inside the body this isn't one of them but it's very cheap comparatively and uh well i, I insurance you, companies I like know, it it's that we're not getting into that right now um we could do a battle but, with insurance companies. yeah but That's some of that too i will say like there's been many bone scans that i've had that they would you know again this is as i got on through the years so i wasn't freaking out but they'd come up to me and say did you hurt your right, you know, like, did you mm -hmm. fracture your foot? Or do you have, a, sometimes I learned of fractures that way. Um, yeah. With my osteonecrosis of the jaw, that will show up in those scans. Any activity in the bone is yeah. going to show up. So, you, you know, if there's, it's kind of like they want to know what the, what other things are going on <laughs> that might cause, you know. That and I'm pretty sure they ask that, don't they, before the scan? Like, have you had any new, is that, is that? A question, or maybe with the doctor. I thought no. Well, I, I think well. This is the bone scans are the sheet that you get to fill out, which I'm usually furious about because right. it comes with the right. whole pregnancy thing. So, so you probably don't even remember the rest of the sheet. So I mean, they're, you know, I think actually some of it it's just a pretty generic thing about like you know surgeries and everything else. Which again, I'm like, God, the list is too long for mm -hmm. me to really do this. Right. And honestly. When I do a, you know, 
if I'm scanning like every six months or a year, sometimes I've forgotten that, mm -hmm. oh yeah, three three months ago I was my foot was in a boot <laughs> or yeah. whatever. It's, right. it's pretty often. It had been pretty often for me. So, And those fractures will eventually go away off a of scan, but not for a while right. until it's done healing. Right. So anyway, yeah, um, just going back to the terms too, the other we talked is stable. My doctor tends to talk about me being stable. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, they like want to achieve this um, you know, NED or this whatever, for me, it's never been a big deal. Like, as long as it's like, I'm not changing anything, I'm okay with that. But, mm -hmm. I, but you just have to get used to how your doctor's going to communicate with you about those things. But also just, um, knowing that, I don't know, there's a lot of terms out there. Mm -hmm. Some are better than others, I guess, but right. you can still move forward with them. So... Um, so the, now what I do most of the time is PET scans. So, um, PET scans are kind of the gold standard for discovering my, you know, being able to main or, uh, monitor, uh, my disease. Yep. Um, newer test, newer test combination, right. Of a CAT scan yep. and. And whatever I don't even know a whole lot about it although it is it's kind of that there's a nuke med component to it so I you go to a PET scan you um, you drink a little bit of barium although some of the some of that is going away that contrast is going yeah, away there's different things they can use for contrast as long as they they have to have some sort of uptake yeah to, they have to have a, a material that will stick to it inside the body and is whatever will work. Right. They don't care. So they you you get an injection when you get in to have a PET scan done. That also you have to sit there for an hour to let it kind of circulate. Um, that's just a hangout and wait kind of thing. Uh, and then the scan itself is, you know, laying on the table. Um, same sort of machine is like the cat scan so it's not claustro <laughs> i'm a little claustrophobic so mm -hmm. things bother me a little bit more but this <coughs> pet, pet scan is really easy um one thing i will say with all testing is like if you don't wear metal <laughs> you can wear your clothes like you can wear your clothes so which they don't tell you that they yeah. don't really tell you that so um and i you know of course i just you feel more comfortable in your own clothes versus being having to change into a gown and mm -hmm. and things like that so I am always, and even, you know, when I had ports too, I would wear a t-shirt with a, something over it that I could get to it easy, get to my port or, mm -hmm. you know, just be conscious of that so that I could stay in my own clothing to do that kind of stuff. So How, how's the barium? I don't mind it, honestly. Okay. It's, um, although I think like, people, <laughs> generally at U of M, it's like, I think it's like banana, vanilla, or like a mocha something. I usually just get... Um, vanilla and, and call it good. Okay. So, uh, pet scans take a while just because, again, you have to, you know, it, it you know, you got to be there for all the prep and stuff. So, cat scans, I think, are really the fastest. And I you can combine a cat scan and a bone scan on the same day. It does depend on what they're scanning. For sure. Scanning for, for sure. That's time. true. Yeah. Yep. I, I would say, though, um, I, I think a lot of times when you're going through a lot of testing, and they're trying to get you, you know, if you, if you need a lot of different tests done. <laughs> um, my hospital's two and a half hours away from us. So okay. uh, I, d I have learned to just say, wait, can this be done with this? Or how can we do this? You know, a lot of times they're really just looking for the, the next appointment or whatever and not thinking about how many trips it's going to take you. So, mm -hmm. again, you can advocate for yourself in terms of, like, asking those questions and trying to get things. I think you found that the schedulers are pretty good as far yeah, as... Yeah, they're really good about that. Working yeah. with that and yeah. figuring it out and helping you. Yep. Yeah. I've even learned, too, like, with a bone scan, you, you get this injection and then it's kind of this... They do all the injections kind of at certain times and then they start doing the scan. So... A lot of times you can say, hey, can I come back earlier? And they'll say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, come back at this time. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know, I do. They have time built in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We work on that. Yeah. So. Um, One of your favorites now. Oh, so my favorite, not favorite, is an MRI. So I've done a few of these over the years. Um, again, MRIs are 
they're pretty loud they're you you know I'm not a really a very big person per se they feel very tight um, they for me when I've had to do MRIs we have done like whole body MRIs so it is a long process mm -hmm. and a lot of time and even they would <laughs> there was a few of them where I had I would come out they would like inject something and go back in oh, so really? like Hmm. My advice for me for MRIs is like take the drugs. Like I do Xanax or Valium or something. Um, my doctor will prescribe it for me for that. Mm -hmm. And um, again, some MRI machines run 24 7. I've done them in the middle of the night. And honestly, I think that was better <laughs> in some ways because you're kind of just like sure. a little more, you know. But MRIs are. Yeah, they they're hard they're hard for me. I I think I I don't know. Those are my worst probably memories of any kind of testing is is doing them. But and I don't mind MRIs because yeah. I don't have that claustrophobia thing. Yeah, I, I just don't have that. So I just almost go to sleep. I just listen to music and oh we're yeah. done type of thing. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I can check out a little bit easier than you can. I think. Yeah, you probably, I mean, and again, you're not in there as long as I am. Right, I, yeah, no You kidding. know, I have done one from, like, my shoulder or something, and, I, mm -hmm. and I've done that one without, you know, drugs or anything, but, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. But knowing that you're going to be in there for a while. Yeah, I've only done minutes. them for an injury. Yeah. Shoulder, back, knees, yeah. stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So I also, the one of the other ones, um, because I was on Herceptin for a while, we were definitely monitoring my heart and seeing some changes in my heart also. So there's also a MUGA test, which is kind of you're laying on one of those machines. The reason I mentioned the MUGA is that is the one that they want your arms above your head for a, um, a lot of it. And it's just, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> it just drives me crazy. And I don't know why, but... Um, it's not a super, it's not a hard test to do. I can't remember if there's prep for that, but I don't feel like there is. Has it been a while since you've done that one? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I stopped Herceptin in 2013, and so I don't, maybe we've done a couple beyond then, but okay. yeah. But. And there's a hundred other tests oh, here, Oh, for too. sure. Again, this has kind of been yeah. my right. list of tests based well, on even, my Well, even I'm saying answer. tests that you've done that oh, you yeah. haven't even made. Oh, that are minor sure. tests yeah. comparatively, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. But lots of tests. Yeah. And just, you know, labs. I used to get labs drawn a, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the other thing I would say is you... <laughs> I do most all of these, like... Um, I will ask for the smallest needle possible now that I don't have a port and they people will go oh it just and it also just helps them know like I'm not an easy stick my veins aren't great mm -hmm. um, you know I think it's okay always to advocate for yourself there's been times that um, like doing a PET scan or whatever they haven't gotten a vein right away and I'm like get somebody else you know <laughs> like i don't let people dig through my arms i don't it's just it's not which a lot of people i think would be really uncomfortable saying yeah including myself yeah but um i have no problem saying it when they're trying to stick you or my family mm -hmm. but myself i would just be like no i just keep trying come on no way and you don't you're just like nope next <laughs> exactly. and it's, i mean they they do this thousands of times a day i mean they're yeah. just like okay good i'll go get jenny yeah and in some ways too though i mean i think it's not they're not necessarily upset by that either because it, you know if you if you don't get somebody when you're trying to stick them it it's a mindset thing for you too in terms yes. of oh gosh now you know so it is kind of sometimes easier just to bring somebody else in and them go Oh, yeah, we're going to go over here. Boom. Yeah, and you it's, know? it's amazing how mm -hmm. they can do that. Yeah. And that person who just got you just saved somebody else. I mean, it's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It's not that they're not good no. at it. It's just that... <clears throat> Especially can, in those big hospitals, that yeah. that's what they do all the time. Yeah, I would say one thing with like getting stuck is if you are not under restrictions, the more hydrated you are, the you're going to be way better off. So, sure. So really... Which might be hard. Depending on where you're at in your treatment and what you're doing, yeah, and that that yeah. can be hard. Even that right there. Right. I but. just yeah. I just had a coworker that just had surgery last Friday, and I was like, 
t- saying the same thing. Like, she's been trying to drink more water in general, and I was like, drink more water, especially going into that, you know. Mm-hmm. You're just, it's easier. It's well, your, I never even th- Your veins are that. more hydrated, so you can, you're an easier stick that way, I think. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, I just thought we would run through... There, there are, and I would love to hear if you guys have some tips or things that you've learned or different tests that you, you've struggled with maybe or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I was, <laughs> one last thing. The CT scan is the lifesaver, but the MRI is the thermos. So it's kind um, of like going into a thermos. <laughs> maybe get that picture out of your head <laughs> and the MRI wouldn't be as bad. <laughs> It's just yucky. Mm-hmm. But anyway. So. All right. All right. Testing 101. There we go. Hope that helped. Have a good week. That's it.